sudden changes are sweeping over the land. The approaching storm may seem violent and destructive to us, but to nature, it's a new beginning of the cycle of life. Not the circle of life. systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich and productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicine, and other elements essential to our lives. Nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. once appeared as desolate as the desert. But over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Of all the forces at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use and sometimes overuse of the land. In our search for more efficient ways to grow food, we often fail to realize the impact of our methods. discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being.
In the farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In arid regions, we're learning to produce food on desert sea coasts by developing and planting crops that thrive on salt water. In Japan, we're learning that by mixing leaves and other living materials into our soil, we can make farmland more food. How will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. Oh, Kevin, this is good for your garden, man. Sealing wax. Palm. Oh, they have pineapples over there. Welcome to our glimmering greenhouses, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture illuminate the wondrous... I didn't even realize the Christmas the decorations. Join us as we bring in the most bountiful time of the year. For some, it's difficult to imagine the holidays without winter and snow. But one of the most important holiday crops actually grows in the tropics. Oh, Dad would love this, man. For centuries, farmers Ginger. in Central America have cultivated cacao to make chocolate. In fact, cacao is chocolate's main ingredient. Today, people around the world are able to enjoy a variety of sweets and keep warm with a cup of hot cocoa. Thanks to this tropical plant. Dates. This would be like dad's ultimate garden. Or maybe grandma. I don't know. That's all right. Banana? Yum, yum, yum. Oh, this is where they cook the fish? Where's their sardinia? How do you know? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> But seafood is an essential part of many festive meals. In parts of southern Italy, family and friends gather once a year to celebrate the modern time and the setting of your seafood dinner. Tilapia, bats, and shrimp, like the ones raised here, using our sustainable water systems, make up just some of the dishes served during this great meal. Today, in the United States, the tradition is known as the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Some shrimp. Fresh water shrimp. Oh, they're all fresh water shrimp. Where are they? Store. Citrus, like the oranges grown here, are common in Florida. But in northern Europe, where fresh fruit is rare in winter, they're much harder There's to a find, Mickey head. making them an extra special stocking stuffer. During Chinese New Year, these vibrant fruits are given as gifts of good fortune. Oh, good coffee. That's what I need right now. 
Oh, you think they grow marijuana here? <laughs> we probably passed it. We don't know. No. They, they say don't know. it's better to give than to receive. Oh, they the hide it. Oh, they hide We're celebrating the room. holidays by giving back to the land. Oh, look, we got some workers. Farming These people are actually working. By recycling working. water, we can give plants rich nutrients. By giving plants labor, we're able to control pests and reduce the need for pesticides. And by growing ground plants vertically, we give Getting them that water protection right from out. disease. Gotta make some salad today. With these gifts, our Some plants can pepper. grow an abundance of best in vegetables. This greenhouse alone grows a bountiful 15 tons of produce each year. When cucumbers are coming out. Making the most of the land's green gifts. Can we see basil already? They have more here. Oh, but I guess this is them uh, producing it. Because it looks like it's going through something. Many of the plants you see here help spice up the holidays. The bark of cinnamon trees, like the one growing beside you, is used to make cinnamon sticks. Do you like eggnog? You can thank nutmeg for its signature taste. Other spices, like ginger and vanilla, add flavor to a variety of holiday cookies, cakes, and other delights. By cultivating these festive plants with care and good cheer, Epcot scientists are able to celebrate the holidays with the land's many gifts. Oh, there's some people working on it, too. Please keep your hands and feet inside the boat. 